Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time is going to be an updated Pendulum Edition deck profile for the post-February 5th, 2018 format, as well as being post-Extreme Force, because Heavy Metal Foes Electromite is honestly the biggest and probably only reason we should be playing this deck right now, because that card still enables some pretty unfair interactions in terms of what you're allowed to do with a Pendulum deck. But basically, the ban list that just came out gave this deck quite a beating in terms of the cards that it lost. We lost all three of our Performer Pal Skullcrabat Jokers and all three of our Double Iris Magicians. And Double Iris was kind of the biggest hit there. I mean, Skullcrabat Joker, we could have just like stayed around to be a consistency enabler at like two or one or something like that. It getting banned was a rather large hit, but it's not nearly the biggest like defining factor of why this deck had to change how it was being built. Uh, Double Iris being a card that we can't search off Duelist Alliance anymore and we can't pop off Electromite or off any other effects to get searches for Star or Time Pendulum Graph is the biggest reason why this deck has changed its scope and focus in terms of what its output and its play strings are and how it's built. But in terms of losing Skullcrabat Joker, the deck can adapt pretty well into that. We've got plenty of other generic pendulum searchers that we can utilize to our advantage with this deck so this is a list i've been testing over the past couple of days uh it's a list that's been doing very well for me uh online testing and stuff like that so figured i would share it with you guys and give you guys some of my own insight in terms of how i think like this deck should be played because i think this deck is still very much a defining force of the new format it's probably one of the top two decks if not the best deck of the coming upcoming format because the deck is still incredibly resilient because it is pendulums and there's so much generic pendulum support out there but anyway this is a 40 card deck this is my uh, starting list my skeleton list of uh of what i've started messing around with and what i've tested and works best for me right now uh anything that like changes in the future is going to be changing relative around in this list uh but three copies of wisdom eye magician uh three copies of harmonizing magician and two copies of black fang for the high scales uh, losing double iris as a high scale kind of sucks, but it's whatever. And then for the low scale magicians, play one oaf dragon and three purple poison. Uh, this is the ratio I like the best. Um, I was testing two oaf, two purple, because you never really want to have them scaled together. Um, and oaf dragon is rather important now more than ever because of the fact that like you can just add back a magician from your extra deck. Uh, but there's so many other cards in this deck as well that you want to put in your scales as well that can sometimes conflict with Oath Dragon. And the Norito play doesn't happen nearly as much as it used to previous format. Uh, so, like, it's just uh, it's one of those things I just cut it down to one because it's not a level 4 magician and that ended up coming up a lot. It's also not a dark, which actually comes up a lot as well. Uh, whereas all the dark magicians were what I needed to uh, max out on. Especially Purple Poison, because Purple Poison is like a card you can use to out things like Unending Nightmare or... Uh, or anti-spell, especially in like sided games, you can just like summon it and ram it into a monster and out those cards if they're uh, if they're problems. But I digress. That's all the magicians, uh, the actual real magicians that you're going to be scaling. Uh, it's 12 of them, and uh, I'm playing the three astrograph and the one stargazer and the three chronograph and the one time gazer. Uh, stargazer is a card that I'm kind of wishy-washy on. I'm kind of like hit or miss on this card. Uh, it could be in the list, it could be not in the list. Time Gazer is almost a guaranteed card in the list, because one, it's a high scale, and two, Chronograph is a card that you're not really ever trying to trigger from your hand, you're just trying to trigger it out of your scale uh, to like summon Time Gazer to be a card you didn't have to normal summon. Uh, Stargazer does the same thing for Astrograph Sorcerer, but in a lot of the play strings, Astrograph is better to keep in your hand and summon and get your search. Uh, but Stargazer is it's just like, it's one of those cards that like it improves the consistency of this deck getting to Electromite, if you do play the Stargazer to go with the Astrographs. Uh, so, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm always on the fence about the card currently in the new format, uh, but it's currently in my list for a reason. Uh, but then carrying on, the Supreme King package, which basically replaces the good normal summon that Joker provided the deck. Uh, basically, like this is able to summon itself from Grave if you foolish it, which is neat if you like discard it, put it in Grave in any way, you can summon it back. Uh, which you'll see later why that's relevant. Uh, but then two copies of Supreme uh, King Gate Zero, simply because like this card has great interactions with like being free discard fodder for Pendulum Call, just being a free Pendulum monster you can summon from your hand, being a scale zero, which is actually kind of relevant, which is being a low scale. Uh, but the reason there's two of these uh, in the deck instead of just one uh, is because simply like you want to get max value out of your Dark Worm at all times. Uh, and sometimes, like you just draw one, and you want to like scale it and get a, like get a, get it uh, get it gone with Electromite essentially. Uh, but also, there's other plays uh, that mainly involve like post side decking, 
where like you use Dark Worm to scale it, and then you pop both. Uh, you scale Dark Worm, use Dark Worm to put one of these from your deck into your scale, and then you Wavering Eyes them to search Astrograph. Then Astrograph gets summoned, and Astrograph searches a second copy of Dark Worm, which you then Normal Summon and search another copy of Gate Zero. Um, so like that's more relevant post side decking because I'm not maining Wavering in this build because uh, it's not necessarily a big enough combo piece to warrant main decking in my opinion and. Like, the deck doesn't really fear wavering that much in the mirror anymore because we have cards like Vortex that we're summoning, uh, and we have ways to play around wavering, and we have Ash Blossom, which negates wavering eyes as well. Uh, but it's still, it's in the main deck because, like, again, you want to get your search off Dark Worm, so even if you open one, you want to be able to search another one. You want more cards in your hand at all times, essentially, with this deck. Uh, so, like, just playing the second copy of Zero it just makes sense. Uh, although you could slim it down to one, uh, honestly. You could, but because I am playing Pendulum Call on this list, uh, I want like more cards that I can search and discard uh, to make my hand size bigger, essentially. But two copies of Luster Pendulum, the Draco Slayer. This card's actually amazing. Uh, I was sleeping on this card for a long time. Uh, I thought this card was like a bit uh, a bit like uh, gimmicky, but it turns out that like any hand where you have access into like Astrograph Sorcerer or whatever and Duelist Alliance or like just hard drawing this, this is a high high scale you can search off Duelist Alliance and you can just pop Astrograph and then search Astrograph, drop Astrograph, search the third Astrograph, and that's actually really cool. Um, it's not a high enough scale for you to be able to pendulum summon your level sevens and your level sixes, but it is a high enough scale for you to summon all your fours, which is sometimes enough to get you where you need to be. Uh, so being a high scale searchable off Duelist Alliance is sometimes relevant in that regard. Uh, you can pop it out of your scale with Electromite so it never scale blocks you anymore. As well as that, uh, it doesn't prevent you from linking away into anything. Like, this thing's restrictions of you can only use it as a material for a Draco Slayer, only apply to Synchro Fusion and uh, Xyz Monsters, doesn't apply to links. So, like, it's just another level 4 you can summon freely. Uh, you can make Ignister, summon cards out, summon the other copy out of your deck with Ignister to extend play. There's so many cool things that Luster actually allows. I was sleeping on it for a long time, but now I'm a huge believer in it. Uh, but then the last three monsters in the deck are three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. This card is just like the best hand trap right now. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any need to main other copies of different hand traps, but I don't know if this deck would even be able to support that because you're trying to open hands that are like four combo cards every single game. Uh, so putting more hand traps in just makes it really sort of difficult for that. But that was 30 monsters for spells. I'm playing the one foolish, just a foolish Dark Worm. Uh, there's not really any like necessary need to play Dragon Shrine in this build because I am playing Pendulum Calls, uh, which means if you like draw Dark Worm, you can just discard it, and that's even that's a better interaction for you than just Foolish or Dragon Shrine. Uh, but I still wanted the option of being able to like have a fourth Dark Worm in my deck essentially. Uh, but then three copies of Duelist Alliance, uh, two copies of Pendulum Call, and one copy of Star Pendulum Graph, uh, and then uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing the traps as well. Two time Pendulum Graphs and an evenly matched. Uh, this is the ten spell card spell and trap card lineup in the deck. Duelist Alliance has Lusters as its search targets, as well as Pendulum Calls, Star Pendulum Graph, and the two time Pendulum Graphs. Uh, basically, like if you draw into any of the other targets, you wanted to be I wanted to be able to have incredibly varied targets for what the deck could have. Um, these were Waverings, but I didn't like having two Waverings in the main because it wasn't necessarily a big combo piece or extender. Uh, it was more of a brick in most scenarios. Uh, and uh, like even like the wavering play with Dark Worm isn't that amazing. I mean, it's just a, it's just an Electromite. Uh, whereas like Pendulum Call is a card you can search off Duelist Alliance if you already open the trap and you don't have like an applicable hand to do Luster. Um, if you don't have an applicable hand to make like Star Pendulum Graph really good, uh, Pendulum Call shines there. You could also just hard draw it because it's a two of. It also protects you from wavering in the mirror, which is which is good. Uh, it triggers your Time Pendulum Graph's Send effect, so it means you don't have to always put Purple Poison in the scale. You can leave Oaf Dragon in your scale if you want that. Uh, it's very easy to maintain the requirements for Pendulum Call because you almost never use scale effects of your Pendulum Magicians anymore unless it is Waver uh, unless it is Wisdom Eye Turn 1. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting card. And I actually really like this card as well because like it's one of those cards that makes people play badly against you. Like, bad players... Um, because this deck is very susceptible to Ash Blossom now on certain points, like you can Ash an Astrograph Sorcerer now pretty easily off the Electromite play, and like that can sometimes cripple you from making Vortex and make you end with like a subpar board. 
Whereas Pendulum Call is one of those cards that people are just like instinctively hard coded to negate with Ash Blossom because they're like, ooh, I get value. But if you Pendulum Call discard Dark Worm, that's actually just the best time for them to Ash against you because all it does is it negates the Pendulum Call. You discarded a Dark Worm. That Dark Worm comes back because you control no monsters and then the Dark Worm searches the gate. So you used Pendulum Call and Dark Worm, two cards, to deal with your opponent's Ash Blossom, but then you still got two cards out of it because Dark Worm Searching Gate is a two card in, uh, is two cards uh, that you gain out of that situation because Dark Worm summons itself back and then Gate gets searched. Uh, so like your opponent just takes a hard minus one to card advantage, uh, and the only thing that happens is you don't search scales. <laughs> um, so like that's actually really good, and then like you're able to just do your Dark Worm play. Uh, into Electromite and do all that other stuff and you're still perfectly fine. If you Pendulum Call discard Dark Worm and your opponent ashes you, you summon Dark Worm back and search Gate and going first you're still at five cards and your opponent is down one. So that's actually really good. I really like this card because of that. Uh, because it just makes people play poorly against you. Like they just ash this card every single time if they have it. And you just always discard Dark Worm for it. You you don't search it if you don't have Dark Worm off Duelist Alliance. Um, and then like you just you get them. You get them out of it. You get the best of them for it. Uh, but that's the entire spell lineup. The trap lineup, two time and one evenly matched. You want to draw time um, or be able to search it with Duelist Alliance. Uh, but like playing two of it gives you a chance to hard draw it alongside Duelist Alliance uh, or just without Duelist Alliance. Like you have five copies of it in the deck essentially. Uh, and just the one evenly matched is here because like it's just a really solid going second card, especially in the mirror. Um, if you ash them at the right time, they can't make Vortex. Um, and so then they set up their board uh, with like a, a vortexless board, and then you evenly match them. Uh, it was just like the 40th card. Like you could swap it for an upstart goblin, or like another pendulum call, or a single wavering, or whatever. But this is just good against all these like horrible back row decks as well that just like try to summon Inspector Border or Thunder King and set like four cards uh, <laughs> because Torrential and Bottomless are at three. Uh, it's really good against those decks as well. So it just has a lot of overlap. That's why it's the 40th card in my deck. Uh, but for the extra deck, two copies of Heady Metal Foes, uh, Electrum, one copy of Deco Talker. These are the only links. Uh, used to play Saryuja, but now the play strings don't get nearly that long. Uh, one copy of Ignister, one Omega, and one Supreme King Clearwing for the Synchros. Uh, this card's a god card. This card's good for turn one because you just take a card out of your opponent's hand in almost all of your hands, no matter how good or weak they are. And then this card's obviously good because it's a board wipe. Uh, then for Xyz, we got Abyss Dweller, we've got Nabuguska, we got Tornado Dragon, we've got Time Star Magician, Supreme King Dragon, uh, Dark Rebellion. I had to think for a second. Uh, Perform Age Trapeze Magician, this actually comes up a lot more than Norito does nowadays, so this takes the slot, especially since I'm only playing uh, the one Oaf Dragon. I'm not playing two, so Norito doesn't come up that often. But this card comes up for OTKs quite a bit. Uh, just Trapeze Magician. It's just, it lets you hit for a lot of damage, especially if you're popping, like, purple poison out of your scale to make, like, an Astrograph or a Chronograph really big. Uh, and then the one Odd Eyes Absolute Dragon, the Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon to go with it, and then the Supreme King uh, Dragon uh, Starving Venom uh, is the last card in the extra deck. This card's cool because you can copy Ignister, so, like, you can essentially Ignister your opponent twice. Uh, it's actually, like, really cool because, like, you just you make Ignister, summon the Luster from deck, use Ignister, pop your Luster, um, and uh, spin your opponent's card, and then you just make two any two pendulums you control that are darks into this, copy the Ignister that's on the field, and if you still have another Luster in your deck, then you can just summon another Luster. Like, it's, it's actually really cool. Uh, it's super cool that that's an interaction that you can do. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this deck profile. Let me know what your thoughts and uh, concerns and questions are in the comments down below. As always, any questions or anything that you need to understand need help understanding of why I'm playing certain cards or why I'm not playing certain cards, definitely feel free to ask, and I will answer to the best of my ability in the comments down below. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Check out the links in the description if you want to connect with me through other forms of media like Twitch and all that sort of stuff and Facebook. Uh, but other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And I guess take care. I'll see you in the next video. Again, let me know what your thoughts are, and if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. But as I've already said, take care, guys. See you later. But now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.